friends, my name is Alex Grekis, and I want to welcome you to the Finding Lost Civilization series. Today we're going to be trekking to the Diablo and Santa Cruz mountain ranges, which begin in the San Francisco Bay Area, run parallel to each other in a north to south direction. Now the interesting thing about these two mountain ranges is that the original inhabitants of this region did not seem to have a substantial rock art history. In other words, there's not many petroglyphs and or pictographs that can be found in these areas. However, we're going to examine two symbols, two cultural markings, petroglyphs left behind by the ancients that once roamed this area. And so I invite you to come trek with me. I know today will be a fascinating journey. Look at this over here. This is beautiful. This boulder laying right over here contains ancient petroglyphs. These are known as cupule symbols right over here. Can you see that? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then over here there's seven and eight and then nine, ten, let's see, eleven and twelve. as we walk the trail you'll notice directly in front of us all these red leaves over here look at this all the way over here look at this on this side these plants these leaves are poison oak and I tell you what this is really the bane of trekking through uh, this area poison oak abounds everywhere you go so just be aware of what it looks like and uh, know your sensitivity and just be aware. Look at this, here's what the plant looks like. I'll come in close. They say the ancients that lived here once used to ingest these leaves to uh, build up some sort of immunity against the poison oak. But I tell you what, it's a terrible thing to come in contact with one of these plants and a rash and itching that follows. So, as I said, simply beware. Just rock. We have a, a style of rock art known as PCNs, pecked, curvilinear, nucleated. And you can see where it's been pecked around the edge and it's curvilinear in shape and it has this nucleated center here. And uh, Reed Hoslam and others have postulated that this nucleated center was swallowed off and then used for charm stone manufacture because of its semi-precious state. And if you look on this rock further too, you can see several PCNs here, here, and this other one that's got another, uh, looks like it's been worked on as well. 
and another PCN up here, another one here, and actually there's about seven PCNs throughout uh, this huge boulder. And then also small incipient mortars and cupules. I think we've recorded uh, oh, close to 50 cupules on this rock. And of course there's BRMs too, bedrock mortars that were used for processing food. So this rock was probably used over a course of uh, uh, many years and probably by different cultures. My name is Joel Greger. I'm a geologist and I have an interest in archaeology. We're here at a large outcrop of blue schist rocks. Native Americans recognized that these rocks were special. They were of a hardness that could be manipulated. You could make charm stones from them and make other rock art symbols on them. They're, from a geologic point of view, they occur where there either is now or was an active plate margin. Uh, they were formed at depth, great depth at high pressures but low temperatures at seafloor uh, subduction zones and now they're at the surface so they're they're unusual in that sense and the mineralogy is very unusual and very beautiful they're often at fault zones and the faults control uh, springs and that's the tie-in with the Native American use of this site now just walking around this area this is what we encountered laying on the ground now one of the things I have to mention is that our journeys are about knowledge and they're not about collecting any artifacts. But over here, this red stone over here, it's called a hematite, right over here. And this was used for paints. This could be crushed and mixed with uh, oils and other plant material. And right over here, look at this. This here is a, a grinding pestle. And right over here, look at this. You can see the flat area. So this stone right here was used in this manner, in this manner to uh, grind food, acorn. There's a lot of uh, oak trees in this area. And over here you can see these here are parts of a pestle. Now this one uh, was uh, served a dual purpose probably. It was linear and probably eight or nine inches in length and, and you could pound inside a mortar. Or right over here it's flat and smooth and you could uh, use it this way also. So it had a dual purpose. Now here's another rough, I guess, uh, a pestle or, or mono or grinding stone right here. Very rough, but certainly one used by the ancients at this site. Now these, uh, now here, this is another, this is the blue schist stone. Look at it. Can you see that? It has a bluish tint to it, and that's why it's called blue schist right over here. Look. Now one of the things that I want to mention about these items that were found laying on the ground here, you know our journeys are about knowledge and it's not about gathering artifacts. So all these items will be placed back in the exact spot where they were found and covered over with leaves and returned to their rightful location. Well, friends, this is an extremely interesting site. We're on top of a ridge line right here. And if you look directly to our front, uh, there's a, a drainage, okay, a ravine. And as I've mentioned many times before, water was a source of life. So near these drainages, you'll definitely find signs of ancient life. And this is what's so fascinating about this site right over here. We're going to see these rocks over here contain the signs of ancient life. Right here, directly in front of us, there's a large sandstone boulder that contains um, mortars right over here. See that? Right there. But the fascinating thing is right here in the center, it's filled with cupules. Look at that. There's cupules 
everywhere, right over here. Now cupules are symbolic in nature. We don't know what it means, but one of the criteria is that it's man-made. These here are not natural, these are made. Now what do they mean? Well, to tell you the truth, we just don't know. The history, the reasoning behind these cupules right over here has been lost in time. But this is truly fascinating because this site right here contains mortars, okay, cupules, which are petroglyphs, and one very interesting boulder right over here around the corner. Let's go take a look at it. That boulder also contains a petroglyph. Now this type of petroglyph here in California is known as the PECT, curvilinear, nucleated style of petroglyphs. Oh, look at this, right over here, there's a small, what I'll call anvil, small mortar area. But right over here, this boulder contains two PCN petroglyphs. Now what's fascinating about this boulder here, it's sandstone. I've been to four or five PCN sites here along the California coastal range, and the PCN petroglyphs have always been in what's known as a blue schist type stone or boulder. This is sandstone. First time I've seen this right here. Now it's called pect, curvilinear nucleated for this reason right over here. Look, right over here, okay, it's pecked or abraded. In other words, with another hard stone, it's chipped away. To create this nucleus right here, this is the nucleated area. And it's called curvilinear because it's actually rectangular here, almost, and it takes a curve right here. As opposed to a nine degree turn, it kind of curves right here. But here's the interesting thing. There's one right here, look. But right adjacent to it, is another one. Look at this. Here's the channel right here. It, it appears that they didn't complete it over here. Normally a pect curvilinear nucleated petroglyph is completed right here. See, that's completed. This looks like an incompleted one right over here. Let me show you something interesting about this beautiful boulder. Right over there, can you see that? The limb has been cut and right over there, and it looks like maybe a limb broken off right over there. So at one time, this here bush right here covered this whole boulder. So it was lost in time for many years. I don't know who cut this brush away, but it revealed this boulder. So let me give you an example over here. My friend Joel came here to this oak tree, which is located about seven feet from that major boulder. And what he did was he lifted this branch. So let me show you what we found underneath this branch right here. Do you see that? Okay, let me get, let me get a little closer. Okay, right over here, you can see what I've done is this lichen over here. I've pushed it away. What we have over here is another PCN petroglyph, pect curvilinear nucleated petroglyph. You can see where the channel is, where it was pecked away and abraded right over here uh, to create this nodule right over here. But again, a fascinating thing is this PCN is on a sandstone boulder. Well friends, I hope you've enjoyed this journey that we've taken together to these two cupule and PCN petroglyph sites. Now the fascinating thing about the cupule petroglyph, the cupule symbol, is that it's found in rock art throughout the world and it's produced by many different varied cultures and tribes without any apparent connection to each other and so that's a great mystery. 
As far as the PCN petroglyphs here in California, there are over a hundred sites that have been identified. Unfortunately, the meaning of the PCN petroglyph and in many cases the cupule petroglyph has actually been lost in time.